Right. Greetings. A very, very good morning to you all. Great to have you here. Uh, thank you for showing up so early uh, this morning, uh, despite the fact that you had to le lose an hour's sleep uh, because of the time change. Are you ready for some cybersecurity? In the <laughs> Excellent. In the next 18 minutes, I will reveal what I believe are the top five emerging cybersecurity challenges. I have a good news and a bad news. Which one would you like to hear first? Let me give you the good news. Here it is. Yes, it is possible. We can be 100% cyber attack proof. But here is not the not so good news. And uh, I paraphrase uh, from a quote from Gene Spafford, says, the only truly secure computer is one that is powered off, cast in a block of concrete, and sealed in a lead-lined room, protected by armed guards. Let's face it, we are living in a highly connected and digitally exhausting world. The objective of my talk is not to put a dampener on the flourishing growth in technologies, but rather to create an awareness that we as individuals can appreciate and learn to mitigate the risks. So let me ask you, are cyber threats real? Is it just hype? or are cyber attacks on the rise? Let's take a look at some facts. Can you guess the total number of all malicious online attacks that happened last year? It's close. It's, it's a whopping 758 million. Imagine that. That is almost 2 million every day. 86,000 per hour, 1,500 per minute. 24 attacks per second. By the time the stock ends, there would have been 25,000 attacks. Every major organization, big or small, has been the victim of a cyber attack. And we are hearing new terms and new threats that were not so much in existence a few years ago, like cyber crime trading, hacktivism, that's hacker activism, smishing, that's phishing with SMS, and so on. And uh, we are all continue to be perplexed by the recent political fiasco and the big question of whether elections can be tampered by a cyber attack. Uh, in this picture, the faces uh, have been blurred to protect the identity of the individuals. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure uh, the hair is a giveaway there. <laughs> uh, nothing has been proven yet, but it makes a very interesting study from a cybersecurity viewpoint. Another type of attack that has been on the rise recently is what is called distributed denial of service, or DDoS. Here, the intruder is not interested in actually stealing your information, but rather bombards your server with unnecessary traffic, thereby it crashes. Huge servers like Twitter, Netflix, CNN, and ma a majority of banks have been under this type of attack. So what have we done? to protect ourselves against cyber attacks. If I shred away all the complexities, traditional security simply does this. Build a fort and have an armored car carry your data. The fort is a firewall, is a device like a firewall, which protects intruders from getting in. And the armored car refers to some kind of encryption to carry your data across the internet. However, new technologies and new applications have mandated us to rethink traditional security, have mandated us to revamp traditional security. Let me now highlight the five major cybersecurity challenges. At number five, I put mobile technologies. Not only are we living in a highly connected world, but also one that is highly mobile. Cellular, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, RFID, NFC, these are just a sampling of the technologies. Can you think of a single day, going through a single day without your smartphone? I doubt it. In fact, there was a recent article uh, in IEEE Spectrum Magazine. It was titled, Growing Up Smartphone. And the caption underneath reads, it will start as a nanny and end as a nurse. Not surprising, given the amazing number of apps that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. But have you ever wondered how many sensors are there on your smartphone and what type of personal information it's collecting? 
take a look from location sensors to accelerometer and, and, and gyroscope for orientation to light sensors, to pressure sensors, to temperature sensors, to barometer for altitude, and add to that the information that's collected from your camera and your phone itself. That's a mind-boggling amount of information. But the question is, how much does your smartphone know about you? It is said that your smartphone knows more about you than your spouse, or your partner, or your closest friend. Think about it. Think of all the apps that you use. Does your smartphone know who you are, where you are, where you have been, who you know, where the people you know currently are, what you bought, where you bought, what you ate, whether you really went to the gym, and you, even your, your current mood. But the more important question is, who is it sharing this information? When you download all the third-party apps, are you really aware of the rights that you may be giving away to those apps to collect your information? If your fitness app needs access to your text messages, that doesn't sound right, does it? What if a hacker is able to build your digital profile by collecting all the sensor information and the, uh, and the data from the third-party apps and use it against you? That is a scary thought. At number four, I put the latest type of virus that is creating a havoc called ransomware. Ransomware stands for ransom demanding malware. It gets into your computer either when you download an attachment containing the virus or when you visit a nefarious website and click on a link. What does it do when it gets into your computer? It starts to encrypt all your files, th thereby rendering them useless. The only way to unlock your files is to get a secret key from the hacker. And in order to get the secret key, you have to pay a ransom. And this ransom is usually demanded through Bitcoin, which keeps the payee anonymous. And it can also start a timer, a ticking clock. Do you know what happens if you do not pay the ransom before the timer times out? Your ransom is doubled. And a new timer started in which the time is cut in half. Now, take a look. There's been a 600% increase in ransomware variants in just one year. Major universities, hospitals, businesses, and even, and even individuals have been the target of ransomware attacks. And just in the qu first quarter of 2016 alone, uh, there's been more than $200 million paid in ransom. At number three is the challenge posed by the new technology called the Internet of Things. What is IoT? What is Internet of Things? Look around you. Imagine if every object that you see is equipped with these capabilities to identify itself, to locate itself, to compute, to communicate, and sense its surroundings. Now if you imagine if all those objects could talk to each other and share information. Welcome to the new Internet, the Internet of Things. Very soon, if not already, your pen, your watch, your TV, your car, your microwave, your fridge, your toaster, your baby monitor, and even your clothes will all be connected to the Internet. They will all have IP addresses. It is said that there will be about 21 billion IoT devices by the year 2020, and they will all be talking to each other. Imagine what a rich attack surface this is going to give the hacker. Imagine the wealth of attacks that can happen with IoT devices. In fact, it was recently demonstrated that one could get into your home security system through your baby monitor. And what about our cars? This could be the next major target. In fact, our cars have so many different computer systems, and they're all connected to the Internet. In a recent Black Hat uh, conference, it was demonstrated how um, hackers could actually remotely control a Jeep when it was uh, being driven. Of course, this was ethical hacking, and the two programmers demonstrated how they could turn on the wipers, they could change the radio stations, they could turn up the volume. But this is not the scary part. They were able to apply the brakes and 
get the car into a ditch all remotely and the driver had very little control. What if an entire nation could be crippled by a cyber attack on critical infrastructure such as uh, the, uh, the power grid, the water supply, uh, the transportation systems, agriculture, industries, and so on. So the challenge is, how can we prevent a DDoS attack on critical infrastructure? At number two, I put big data. Don't you think we are living in exponential data times? Take a look at just what can happen online in just 60 seconds. Unbelievable. And this does not include the uh, Snapchats and the Instagram postings and the Pokemon Go updates and millions of other online games. But over 3 million Google searches, uh, 29 million WhatsApp messages, 500 hours worth of YouTube in just 60 seconds. Of course, 499 hours are just cat videos, isn't it? And almost half a million tweets. And that has significantly gone up since the new presidency took over south of the border. But what I'm trying to say is we are leaving an incredibly large digital footprint. It is said that in the next two years alone, we are going to generate 1.7 million bytes of information every second for every human on this planet. Can you imagine how much of information that is? Imagine all the information that's been produced by humankind in the past 5,000 years. We are going to surpass that in just two years. This incredibly large digital footprint is what attracts hackers to cause a variety of different attacks. And that leads us to the final one on our list. Well, technology is great. We can have a million dollar security infrastructure in place, but it is said that your security is only as good as the weakest link. And unfortunately, the weak link is not technology. It is us, the people. Welcome to the human factor. It is said that amateurs hack systems, but professionals hack people. It's way easier to con people using social engineering techniques and make them reveal information rather than using tools and rather than using technology. And the final string the last string in, in the weakest link happens to be our password. Facebook accounts, Gmail accounts, millions of bank accounts have been hacked. An analysis of 32 million breached accounts indicates the simple thing. People use insecure passwords. And hackers have a dictionary of well-known passwords that can use that to launch brute force attacks. And we carry this burden of having to remember so many different passwords and having to change them so often, which we seldom do. In fact, Chris Perillo, a security blogger, has this analogy and quote. I'm sure you will never forget this. Uh, he, he says this to practice cyber hygiene. He says, passwords are like underwear. You don't let people see it. You should change it often. And you should never, ever share it with strangers. Of course, we don't recommend you changing your passwords every day like you change underwear, but you get the idea. So what are the alternatives to remembering passwords? Of course, there are password managers, but they have their own pros and cons. And there's a lot of research being done uh, seeking alternatives to passwords. For example, there's what is called multi-factor authentication. So you need to carry another device to which another code is sent, and then you use that in addition to passwords. That is like a two-factor authentication. And then if you can use your fingerprint biometrics, that will be a three-factor authentication. So all uh, plenty of research is going on in this area. How safe are biometrics? To a large extent, yes. But you should remember that technology is also progressing rapidly. Uh, in fact, very recently, just a few months ago, Researchers have been able to extract fingerprints from peace sign photos by zooming in on them, creating a template, and using that to authenticate your smartphone. Well, folks, 
where, what is the actual future of cybersecurity? If I have portrayed a picture of uncertainty in cyberspace and cybersecurity, I want to leave you with some hope. I believe that people and technology can work together to find effective solutions. We have an amazing ability to sense, process, and analyze huge amounts of data with the current computing power. And big data analytics can do three things. It has three characteristics. It is descriptive, it is predictive, it is prescriptive. So what if we are able to time travel virtually to combat cyber attacks? What if we are able to scour the internet, collect huge amounts of data, analyze it, check it for digital attack signatures, time travel a few hours or even maybe a few minutes into the future, predict what type of attacks can happen, time travel back to the current, and put the uh, uh, antidote in place to prevent the attack. Does it sound like Hollywood minority report fiction or science fiction? Well, it may be closer to reality than you think. Tell me, who cannot be fascinated by cybersecurity? We have just seen the tip of the iceberg. As they say, the more we see, the more we see that there is more to see. Cyber threats and cybersecurity will continue to play a major role in our lives. But I believe that we as humans and as a society have continued to evolve and adapt. We will learn to mitigate these threats, and hopefully the good will prevail. Thank you very much.